Well, good afternoon. And uh, we're going to do study number seven on the lines simply presented. But before we begin, can we open with a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have here this afternoon to open your word together. We need wisdom and understanding. And we know, Lord, that um, as we study these things, we ask that you can help us see them clearly and that uh, the truths in your word will be able to be shared with others. We ask, Lord, that your angels can watch over each person and that your spirit can speak to each heart. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So in this line, the study on the line simply presented, I have asked people who watch them to ask questions and post those questions on um, my YouTube page. So I haven't had anybody uh, particularly you know, ask questions in that regard. I have had people ask me from other studies different questions. So that's um, that's good. But um, and I have had some people encourage me about the studies. So that's nice as well. Um, so people are learning from these studies. Now, the whole idea of the lines, and I'm, I'm going to keep pressing this point, um, that this is Isaiah 28, precept upon precept, line upon line. And um, that this, these lines are lines of judgment. Verse 17, judgment will also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. So the line is right, is judgment. Righteousness are the way marks, the plummet, the uh, vertical lines. And um, we know that this is about a covenant with God's people. So. Um, there's lots of things about the lines we studied in studying the lines. We, we dealt with Abraham's covenants. We also know that the covenant in the midst of the week, uh, Christ confirming the covenant with many. But we also know that the lines represent counterfeit lines. That is, uh, they represent the work of the enemy as well. And we can see that with the two 2520s. The ones for northern Israel is a counterfeit of Christ's covenant week. And, and there are those that have an, a, co a covenant with death. So, so we can see that there's a true covenant, there's a false covenant, and that these lines illustrate um, God's working with men. And God's workings with men are ever the same. It's a three-step testing prophetic message that uh, develops and demonstrates two classes of worshipers. Now, uh, since the study last week, in our study of the lines, uh, and I'm trying to remember which day that was. Um, um, so, let me see here. Might be able to find it on these charts. Um, so, it must have been... I don't know if it was Wednesday, uh, but uh, does anybody re remember what day uh, we took the line and flipped 9-11 uh, to 11-9? Anybody remember that? I'm just trying to see if I can find that chart. I thought it would be easier. But we didn't have a study on Thursday. I think it was Wednesday, but uh, anyway, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to address that. We're going to address it. I have it written on the board behind me. Um, because one of the things that we have to understand is how we separate out the lines. And so we're going to be dealing with stuff on the board today. 
and making some of these things a little clearer, hopefully. Okay, <clears throat> so hopefully everyone can see this quite well. And we're going to reproduce this again. So one of the problems that we have had with the lines, and um, when we look at the history of the lines in this movement, Jeff had, um, and we could go all the way back to the prophetic chain. But the idea was, is we have a reform line. And there was these major reform lines. I'm not going to go through all the reform lines. Um, but in those reform lines, they had developed this idea that you had this period of darkness. And then you would have a time of the end. And then... This would be the arrival of the first angel's message, and there would be a formalization. There would be an empowerment. And then the second angel would arrive. Whoops, I should put it down here. Now, in each of these, we have these formalizations and empowerments and then the arrival of the third angel. Now in Millerite history, um, we, we developed this understanding over time. So initially we didn't have, um, it is it well-defined, that is the arrival of the second angel had to do when the Protestants closed their doors and we had made the 1843 chart. Um, but as time went on, we started to develop these lines and we could parallel them with our history. So we're going to have here 1798 and we're going to have 1989. So these are both the time of the end and both an arrival of the first angel. And then, of course, we have an increase of knowledge. So increase of knowledge, sometimes called an increase of light. And then we have a formalization of the message. And so here in Millerite history, we had 1833. And this is when Miller gets his credentials. And we had 1996. This is Jeff's publication of the Time of the End magazine. And then we have an empowerment of the message. So this would be uh, August 11, 1840. And in our history, this was 9-11. As we continue to develop these lines, we came to recognize that the second angel's message arrives um, in, on April 19th. 1844. In our history, we have this again as 9-11. So we have these two way marks. And so if we take this line um, and we put here 9-11, so we're just going to put our line up here, and we have this as 9-11, Jeff just brought these two way marks together. That is August 11th, 1840 was 9-11, and so it was April 19th, 1840, also 9-11. It's one event in our history, but it has two different purposes. Now, we, we came to uh, label this midnight, the midnight cry, and the Sunday law. 
And in this case, this would be uh, the first day of the first month, the fifth day of the fourth month, first day of the fifth month, and the 10th day of the seventh month in the right history. So the one thing that we had to recognize is that we have to learn how to separate out these lines because these cannot be the same line, even though that's how Jeff did it. Um, because what we have done is we've, we've, as we've zoomed in to these lines, um, into these way marks, we end up with other lines. And we just didn't know we were doing that. It took us a long time to really sort that out. So when we look at Millerite history, then and we look at our history, this parallel here is actually a special case. Now, one of the things that we have to address also is Samuel Snow. So we know that um, we're gonna have over here on the second day of the fourth month, we're gonna have this July 18 way mark. That's gonna be Samuel Snow's last letter. There's three days, right? This is July 21st, April 19, August 15th, and October 22. Do you need more light in here? No, nope. you can't get more light in here. Well, I guess I could turn that on. Yeah, that's just when I'm sitting at the computer. Okay, <clears throat> so I think this, this is understandable, that this is what we understood in 2016. Yet what we didn't grasp is that we were addressing different lines. So we know that Samuel Snow's letters have this period that's marked out 153 days, and that's gonna be from February 16th to July 18th. So this 153 days, what does 153 symbolize? 1533. Okay, so, so it represents 1533. Now, Ellen White, she talks about this wonderful manifestation of the power of God from 1840 to 1844. And we, here, August 11, 1840, if we go like this, this is 1,533 days. So is this equivalent to this? I know this is supposed to be a line simply presented, but. Parallel. Okay, it's parallel, right? So they're parallel. So what's happening here is we have a separate line that symbolizes this line. And this is snow, of course, right? Now this is not snow completely. This is just Samuel Snow's letters in 1844. And we know that this has a, um, there's a big structure to this, which we're not gonna look at right now. But this came to be understood to be the prediction before midnight, that Samuel Snow's letters represent this information that this movement had developed dealing with July 18, 2020. Three days before midnight is the symbol of the prediction before midnight. It ends on July 18. Now, the center date for this is May 2nd, right? Which is Passover. And originally Tabo, um, said that this date is the symbol of the prediction before midnight. I know it's hard to see that there. But this was the center of a chiasm. So from February 16th, it's 16, two months and 16 days to May 2nd. And from May 2nd, it's two months and 16 days to July 18th. So this was the center of a chiasm. And the May 2nd letter 
is uh, dealing with the midst of the week. It's dealing with the chiasm in the 70th week. And it's dealing with the Passover, when the Passover occurred in 31 AD. So there was lots of symbolism and power in understanding this prediction before midnight with the May 2nd Passover. Now, I'm arguing that this zoom in here relates to our problem that has to do with 9-11. Now, we have here in Samuel Snow's history, August 11th, 1840. Um, but the February 16th, 1844, which is the first letter, um, has to come after August 11th, 1840. That means in our history, we have something that comes after 9-11, and that 9-11 is the 9-11 that's August 11th, 1840 parallel. So when we have 9-11 as being the first day of the first month, it has to be a separate line. Right? Now, one of the ways that we address this, and I, I don't, I want to make sure that people understand it, because I know some of you who are live here understand this, but people are watching to understand what this means, because we're going to take this way mark here, and we're going to do this. So what have we done? What happens when I do that? I'm sorry, I didn't see what you did. What I did is I went to the second 9-11 the one that's the first day of the first month, April 19th, 1844. And I flipped it to 11.9. So now we have a line where we have 9.11 is 2001. But the second 9.11 that we've seen as a, uh, a way mark that is the arrival of the second angel's message in 1844. I flipped that to 11.9, 2019. So what have I done when I did that? Uh, making a mirror. Okay, it's a mirror, but it's, it's I've done something else. I've, I've done something with the line. That is, I'm showing something about the line that goes from April 19th or, or pardon me, from uh, November 9th, 2019, to the Sunday law, that I've, I've basically taken this out of, of this bigger line. And see, part of the problem that we had, when we look at the really big line, none of this history Ellen White addresses, other than the, the simple idea that there is a repetition of the first and second angels met messages prior to the Sunday law. But she doesn't talk about a midnight and a midnight cry. She doesn't talk about any of these dates. She does say Millerite history will be uh, repeated. More specifically, she says the parable of the 10 virgins has been fulfilled and will be repeated to the very letter, right? That's the comment. That's the comment. And, and we've just taken that usually and simplified it. You know, Millerite history is repeated to the very letter. But that's, that's not really what she says. Now, it is implied, because this is the parable of the ten virgins, that's being repeated. But she doesn't say that Millerite history is repeated to the very letter. She says the parable of the ten virgins is. And so 
we know then that the parable of the ten virgins. Um, okay, here's how we would look at it. She says that there's going to be the Sunday law, the outpouring of the latter rain, the mighty angel of Revelation 18 coming down at the Sunday law. And this is going to swell into a loud cry. And then there will be the close of probation would be the next way mark. But that would be after the Sunday law here, right? Correct. Okay. So, and Jeff initially did that. But once we started studying Millerite history and we started putting the midnight cry before the Sunday law, we weren't able to see that this was a different line than the one with the loud cry that Jeff initially had. So when he had, had simplified the line, he never had 9-11. He just had 1989, the Sunday law and the close of probation. Sunday law followed by the loud cry. He didn't have a midnight and a midnight cry before the Sunday law. He didn't have 9-11. He didn't have any of this. So when we started to understand this, what we were understanding is the parable of the ten virgins. That's fulfilled to the very letter prior to the Sunday law. Because Jeff would then take October 22 and line it up with the Sunday law. Now, when he was doing this, people were uncomfortable with him moving the waymarks. Right? That's People were leaving the movement, some quite silently. Um, but others not so, because they, they couldn't understand what he was doing. Right? They didn't, we didn't know what was going on, e even those that stayed in the movement. We, we didn't understand these lines at all. And I know when I talked to people about it, and I told them that I didn't understand the lines, they sort of mocked me. But I, I sort of took it as the emperor has no clothes type of thing. Um, <laughs> because... To me, it was they were just pretending that they understood the lines because I couldn't have a um, comprehensive or meaningful discussion regarding the lines. So I knew they didn't understand the lines either, I didn't, either as well, but I didn't tell them that. I just told them that I didn't understand the lines. Um, and, and they just didn't understand how I couldn't understand the lines. But they didn't because we didn't understand the lines especially as they started to get uh, more complex. Now we had introduced this ideal of fractals and it was Michael who did that in 2014. Now the idea of a, of a fractal is when you look at, um, you zoom into a, a design, a mathematical fractal design, you will just see the repetition of that design. As you zoom in, you just becomes the same design again. Now there's um, ones that are the same, they're self-similar. I can't remember the technical names for these things. But one of the principles was that we can zoom into the line and we will see a reform line. And we tried to do this by staggering the lines, but that's actually not how a fractal works. A fractal would be if I look at any part of this line, that is any of the way marks, and I zoom into that way mark, I will see a reform line, the exact same reform line. There will be different events. Some of those events might be shared, but it's going to be a reform line. And so- It's gonna have the same pattern. You're gonna have the same pattern, right? It's a different reform line, but it's gonna look the same, right? It's not gonna be switched around in different order, which Parminder was doing with his reform lines, uh, which didn't make sense to me. You know, the priest, Levites, the Nethanim, and the 144,000. Um, and, and so there was all kinds of problems with his reform lines. And he also said that we couldn't have one reform line typify another, or one waymark typify another, which, of course, destroys the whole principle of, of, of the fractalization of the lines. And we've seen in our studies in examining we're not examining the lines, but in understanding the lines that we've done for a year and a couple months now, a year and a month, um, in examining the lines, the thing that we have seen is that these patterns occur in every line, that we can zoom into a waymark 
and we will see the same characteristics in a, a zoomed in reform line. And so what we must be seeing here is a zoom into a reform line. Now, the question is what reform line are we zooming into when we deal with Samuel Snow's letters? So we, we could ask the question, are we zooming into August 11th, 1840? Is this just an extension? Is this, is this um, reform line here? How, how do we address this? Because we can see that this reform line represents this reform line. That it, it represents from August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844. July 18th, how does it symbolize October 22? There's a couple of days. 187th days or 187th yeah. day. Yeah, this is the 187th day of the year. So from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month is 187 days. And, and this is what Snow is proclaiming in his letters. What he's going to proclaim here is that we're at midnight and the 10th day of the seventh month is going to be um, the second coming of Christ in his understanding of things. But he's, he's going to present this here. Now, this is the prediction before midnight. So we can say that this is not Samuel Snow's letters are not a zoom into the midnight way mark. And Samuel Snow's letters can't be a zoom into um, way marks that are created by his letters, right? So we have, um, you know, so we have like Pentecost letter, we have uh, the May 2nd letter, um, we have the first letter. These are waymarks in Samuel Snow's letters. But Samuel Snow's message is a zoom into one of these waymarks in Millerite history. So let's look at that first. What waymark would it be a zoom into? And remember, we have two chiasms in Samuel Snow's letters. We have the one with May 2nd in the center and July 18 over here in February 16 over here, right? But we have another chiasm and that other chiasm goes like this, June 22 and February 16. And the center here is April 19th. And over here, there's 391 days from June 22nd to July 18. But of course, this is July 18, 1845. But still, this 25 days from, from here to here, if you add that to 365, you get 390. Um, but in uh, this history, we're just going to say it's 391. I'm not going to go and explain that, but it is, okay? So we can count the 391 from June 22nd. But, uh, pardon me, that's July 18th. So this is actually 26 days, right? June 22nd to July 18th, it's 26 days, right? So you add 365 plus... 26, and you get 391. That's how it's done. Okay? So I'll just do it like that. Make sense? So Zap, Sam, Samuel Snow's letters are a zoom into which way, Mark, in Millerite history?
the one that ends on July 18th. Okay, um, but July 18th is not a way mark in Millerite history. So I thought that I said, was the last letter. Yeah, but we can't use Samuel Snow's letters and zoom into the way marks of his letters. Do you understand what I'm saying? Would it be the midnight cry? Yeah, it's, it needs to be one of these way marks in Millerite history. That's what it has to be a zoom into. Yeah, so, so we have some options. There's five of them. I mean, we could say it's a zoom into August 11th, 1840. We could say it's a zoom zoom into the first day of the first month. It's a zoom into the fifth day of the fourth month. It's a zoom into the first day of the fifth month. And it's a zoom into the 10th day of the seventh month. But since it occurs with a, a mirror that has the first day of the first month as the center, wouldn't it make the most sense to say that Samuel Snow's letters is a zoom into the arrival of the second angel's message? In Millerite history. Uh, and that's at uh, eleven nine, right? Um, one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm. I've seen April nineteenth. Yeah, yeah, at eleven nine. So this is this is a really important point now, because if we take this line here now that we've created in in our history 9 11 2 11 9 this midnight midnight cry and sunday law waymarks we need to recognize that samuel snow's letters is representing this history and it's zooming into november 9th 2019 that is because that's the parallel to samuel snow's history Okay, I, I I get that. Okay, so so the simple way of looking at it is that Samuel Snow, and this is the way that I presented it right from the beginning, but I wasn't marking it as 11-9. I was marking it as the first day of the first month that Samuel Snow's letters were zoom in to April 19th because his letters are going to have the two Passovers on either side, Right. And this history here, if we look at this history here, we have a parallel where we take this, um, this February 16th parallels in our history. What? So if I put February 16th and I'm going to draw this line, this is what date in our history? Mm. Whoops. June 9, 2018, right? Because this is going to be 63 days, 63 days, right? In our history, we have the same thing, 63 days, right? And the center here was August 11th, right? 2018. And then this was November 11th, wasn't it? October 13th. <laughs> I mean, November 9th, I mean. No. October 13th, okay. It's going to be 391 days and a half to November 9th. Okay. Okay. So this, this is our history. And this was extremely powerful for Jeff. When I presented July 18th, I drew this pattern, but we already had this pattern. Now there's more to this pattern because in this pattern, we have also July 27th. And that's gonna be Daniel from Brazil. Right? And he's going to make this prediction about these 126 days. Right? He's going to count them ordinarily from June 9th, from June 10th, but I'm counting them cardinally from June 9th. So this is a symbol of 
Josiah Lich's prophecy, right? And this parallels, um, in this history, it's going to be April 3rd, the second publishing of the letter, right? We're also going to have six days from here as well. That's going to be June 15th. That's going to be the end of the 391-day structure symbolically. So we actually have all, all of the waymarks in Samuel Snow's letters in this history, including the fact that we're going to have the July 18th date parallel the November 9th, 2019 date. So July 18, 2020. Um, July 18th, you say? Like this is November 9th. See the 391? See the 391 here? That's July 18th, 1845. But we can take that and say that that history gives us a July 18 two different ways, okay. right? It gives us a July 18 in this 153 days. And if we take the 126 days, and one's inclusive, one's not, and um, and then we count 391, we get July 18 as well. So that means our history that was producing November 9th shows that Samuel Snow's letters produced July 18th in the same pattern. So Samuel Snow's letters are a zoom into November 9th. Right? In that's 2019. That's what it's looking like. Yeah, that's what it's looking like to me. But they're bearing witness to this history here to the three days before midnight. Because July 18th is a symbol of the prediction before midnight. And so we end up with this prediction, which is July 18, 2020 but it's not the event that we think. It's a symbolic date. And, but it ties to our lines, to our understanding of Millerite history in Samuel Snow's letters. So again, these are the lines simply presented, but it's gonna take time for people to really let these things sink in. So if it's a zoom into November 9th, November 9th is the arrival of the second angel's message in this line. Now, 2001 is the empowerment of the first angel's message. But it's also true that September 11th, 2001 is the arrival of the second angel's message. But that's a different line. That's a bigger line. Because this 9-11, this here, this is what date? If this is 9-11, Two thousand nineteen. What what follows nine eleven two thousand nineteen that we label as midnight? Or do we? Because we, we label this as midnight in one line as well. So we have to separate out these different lines. And and that's the confusing part because we were addressing this as midnight. Right? Correct. But but this can't be midnight in this line. Because we also did mark 9-11 as the first day of the first month. Just like we, or 11-9, just as we did with 9-11. And that's because we kept zooming into our lines. That is, this movement 
has been zooming into um, a way mark that is really altogether, it's the Sunday law. Because the Sunday law is the arrival of the second angel's message, right? Because the fourth angel is the second angel. Right. So if we're looking on the big line, Revelation 18 is the arrival of the second angel's message in a repeat of history. But that repeat of history is what Ellen White sees, that the first angel needs to be repeated, and then the Sunday law comes. That's really the rep repetition of the second angel's message, right? If we think about Ellen White's line, think about Revelation 18, the second angel arrives at the Sunday law. And then the close of probation is the arrival of the third angel, right? Because the arrival of the third angels in Mel Millerite history is the close of probation. That is, that's the commencement of the Day of Atonement. The close of probation is uh, the termination of the Day of Atonement, the end of it. Now, so what we're going to have to do, I'm going to have to erase this all. Um, sadly, but I, I mean, I can draw this all out on the computer la later. <clears throat> so here's what we, we have to be able to do, is we need to know what line we're on. When we're talking about a way mark, we can't just label it. We need to know what we're doing. So if we go here, let's see if this one works better. Yeah, you know, we have Millerite history, we have the darkness. We have the first, second, and third angel's messages. We're going to have a progressive destruction of four generations. And then we're going to have, in the fourth generation, the time of the end again. Right? So this is the time of the end, 1798. That's Daniel, and I probably have to move that up. So that's Daniel 1140a. This is Daniel 1140b, 1989, right? And so Ellen White sees this. She sees the third angel's message. We're under the proclamation of the third, right? So the third angel arrives, and we're going to be under its proclamation until it closes. Now, however we want to look at this, this is the close of probation. The third angel does something. I mean, we could say it's empowered under the Sunday law, but it's also the arrival of the second angel. And so I would say that that this is the third angel arriving again. But before that, we have to have the Sunday law, right? With the loud cry. Now you can see this is what Jeff had prior to 9-11. And this is a valid line because it's a repetition of the first, the and and, and even here, like he has this Sunday law here, that this is going to be Revelation 18. Ellen White does as well. It's the arrival of the second angel or the fourth angel. So she has it at the Sunday law. So did Jeff. And But he's going to see, of course, the first angel is going to arrive here. The second angel arrives here. The third angel arrives. This is the repetition of Millerite history. 
So in this context, the third angel arriving here is in the context of this repeat of history. Now, we, we could take Millerite history and we can take Midnight and the Midnight Cry and put it here after the Sunday Law. And then this would be uh, the third angel being empowered at the close of probation. So it, it's on Ellen White's big line. That is, it's the close of probation. Now, in here, the third angel has to be formalized somewhere. Normally, I put that as 1888. That's going to happen at the end of the first generation. Um, so you're going to have 1888. And that's the third angel being formalized, which makes sense. Right? And you can see in our Friday night studies dealing with A.T. Jones, where he's talking about the mighty angel of Revelation 18 has come down in 1892. Well, he's already formalized that third angel's message in that proclamation of the third angel's message. But in this history, this is going to stall at the end of that first generation. So this message is going to be rejected. And so the second generation, you know, you're going to end up with 1919. The books of a new order and then you're going to get the fourth generation beginning in 1957 with this is uh the doctrine of christ this is questions on doctrine this is also a period of darkness right so you got the darkness in the fourth generation is it all making sense to people well it is to me um, but I've been studying this for a while. Yeah, I know. <laughs> me too. <laughs> so it makes sense to me, but hopefully it makes sense to other people. So, so Ellen White, she sees this as a repetition of Millerite history, right? That is a repetition of the parable of the 10 virgins. But this is what Jeff, this is how Jeff looked at the line. I mean, before he had 9-11, they may not have, you know, marked out these four generations exactly um, until after 9-11. But, but this part he had. Now, he paralleled this with August 11th, 1840. So they had it as the arrival and the empowerment of the first angel. But we know now that we have a history that goes in between here. So that history is another line, right? Because we have here that the Sunday law is the close of probation. Well, that can't be that close of probation, right? We can talk about a close of probation with the Sunday law, but it can't be that close of probation. So, you know, we can look at this smaller line here. And we would just normally do this then. Um, well, here's what Jeff did next. You know, once we had 9-11, you know, he could put 9-11 in the middle, 1989 here. And he could put the Sunday law here, right? Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah, that's what he did. This would be Habakkuk's two tables. Because right? he doesn't have uh, Midnight in the Midnight Cry yet. But you can see what, what he had done, taking this. Well, this is now a close of probation. That's the Sunday Law. But then we zoomed in further. So when we zoomed in further, we put 9-11 over here. And we put the Sunday law here, and then we put the midnight cry here, right? 2014. Right. Okay. And then in 2016, we did this. 
we put midnight. Now, see, we, we start to have things like this is the first day of the first month in 2014. This is the first day of the fifth month. This is the 10th day of the seventh month. But even before we had that, Jeff was lining up the Sunday log with October 22. But especially once, you know, once we had this, that was how he was doing it. But then this became even clearer. This was the 10th. This is the Sunday log, the 10th day of the seventh month, right? This is August 15th. This is July, you know, the fifth day of the fourth month, July 21st, right? So in 2016, so I'm going to put this as 2014 and 2016. So what Jeff was doing was zooming into waymarks. So, so when he had this, I mean, this on a simple sense is a, a zoom into the Sunday law. I mean, he's adding something to the Sunday law this repeat of history, but he hasn't, he hasn't disrupted Ellen White's um, alignment of the way marks. But when he does this, he has, that is now he has something different. He has a history in here that has the time of the end and 9-11. Now 9-11 in Millerite history, if we're saying that the Sunday law is October 22, then you start to see that, well, that's going to be August 11th, 1840, right? That's what he's first going to do. He's not going to have the first day of the first month. He's not going to have, you know, the first day of the fifth month and all that. He's just going to have, this is August 11th, 1840. Now, when he has, this is August 11th, 1840, he can put things after August 11th, 1840, that there is events in Millerite history here. And so he's going to start this process of developing this, but it's not till we get the first day of the first month and the first day of the fifth month that we get this, right? This, this kind of detail. So in 2014, I should probably put 20, We'll put 2013, just because in 2014, they're going to start to move towards this. So we're going to find midnight, cry, and then midnight by 2016. Now, when we do this, so here, this is August 11th, 1840, right? In this line in 2013. Right, that's all Jeff's going to do. He's not going to say this is um, the, the arrival of the second angel. This isn't the first day of the first month, correct? In 2013, Habakkuk's two tables in 2013 and 2012. Do people agree with me on that? Uh, again, please. That this is August 11th, 1814 when he's paralleling this with Millerite history. He's not yet making this the arrival of the second angel. I agree. Right, okay. But then in 2014, as he starts to understand this- I agree with starts... it too. What's that? William? I, I agree with it too. Okay. So then in 2014, he starts to develop uh, this idea of the midnight cry which is going to be the arrival of the second angel. They already have this idea that the midnight cry is the arrival of the second angel. That is the Protestants close their doors, but it's not going to be till we start to get the first day of the first month and the first day of the fifth month that we can now mark the midnight cry as an event in Millerite history, August 15th. And that means that we're going to make 9-11 the first day of the first month, right? Because here, 9-11 is not going to be the first day of the first month. Yeah, right? It's going to be August 11th, 1840. So now it starts to move. And so here, he's zooming into... Okay, so... 
you got to keep it muted. Okay, so um, so here he's zooming into this history, right? So he's now instead of seeing this, he's starting to see this. So he's zooming into something, but that would be the August eleventh, eighteen forty. 9-11, right? So he's going to put 9-11 here. That's going to be zooming into a way mark that this, in a sense, is all a zoom into the Sunday law. But this is going to be August 11th. Here, this now is the arrival of uh, the second angel's message. But Jeff hasn't really distinguished that. What he says is we're going to bring these two together. So how does he do that? He simply does this. Right? So he's got the 10th day of the seventh month. So you can see that that's what he does, is he takes this line, where this is August 11th, 1840, and he takes this line where this is the arrival of the second angel's message, and he just plops it in there. Can we see that? Right. Yes. So he combines those two, but in his mind, he's already understood that this is August 11th, 1840. But can't we see that this is a separate line? It has to be. It can't be the same line. This has to be a zoom into a way mark. And, and in some ways, we can say that all of these are a zoom into the Sunday law in one way or another. But we know that there is a midnight cry here, but there's still a loud cry over here, right? So when Ellen White says that the yes. midnight cry parallels the loud cry, when Jeff does this, well, this really needs to lay under this, right? This, this here needs to fit in here somehow. That is, this may Onto not the big there. line, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm just saying that it parallels it. Right. If we were drawing out a line, see what we've done is we've separated this out and we've said, well, this is this is what's going to happen. Right. We have 1989 and then we're going to have midnight, the midnight cry, the Sunday law, then the loud cry, then the close of probation. As if this is part of this line, that it precedes the Sunday law. Right. But this doesn't. I mean, this does. But what it's paralleling is this whole line so if it's paralleling this line right that is it's paralleling this then we're, we're just not clear on what it is we're doing see we're repeat we're 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 typifying something that's going to happen So our midnight cry is typical of the loud cry that occurs on the big line. This is not part of this line. Can we see that? Our, this line here that, that Jeff had, there isn't a midnight and a midnight cry before the Sunday line. So you stand in 2013, that line came prominent. From in 2013, this is how he saw the lines. Yeah, that means it became prominent, right? Yep, that's that's how we understood them in 2012 as well. Right. After 9-11, this is how we understood the lines. So once we put 9-11 in here, and we said that 9-11 was uh, the arrival of the angel of Revelation 18, right? That is, we took this history and put it here, we were simply zooming into the Sunday law waymark, right? Because 9-11 is not the Sunday law, but it is. 
But, but see, we have the Sunday law over here. Because this is all about the Sunday law. Our history is about the Sunday law. So once we got 9-11, we could just see that we're actually, this is a separate line, that our history is leading up to the Sunday law. Our history doesn't include this. Right? I mean, our history may move into that. That's what we're, we believe. But when we said that the mighty angel of Revelation 18 came down at 9-11, well, all we're doing is now typifying the mighty angel of Revelation 18 coming down at the Sunday line. So this is not on Ellen White's line, right? She is the arrival of the third angel. This is a line that we created when we noticed it. Right. So we, we started to recognize that we were going through a reform line because Jeff in 1989 understood that we would, but he didn't fully understand those lines, right? They unfolded gradually. But what we tried to do is, is make these way marks a part of this line, which they're not. I mean, we can say there, there may be a part of this. We are a fractal of that line. The fractal, right? So we zoom into the Sunday law and we get this, right? But originally, before Correct. Happened, Jeff is just on this line. He has a time at the end, but he's still on Ellen White's line. But now we're, we're, he's zooming in, but then he's going to zoom in even more, right? So just like you can't take this and put it here, you can't really take this and put it here unless we understand what's happened with our lines where we take 11.9 instead of 9.11. So in this line, we now get 11.9. So now this, this then is not 2016. Maybe I should have left that. So we'll keep this as 9-11. But if I draw this line down here now, we'll call this um, 2020, because this is what I understood to a large degree in 2020 and even before, is that November 9th, 11-9, this was representing the first day of the first month. So now we have this new line. Now the Sunday law here is December 21st or 25th, pardon me, 25th, 2021. This is 2019, right? Now, we did have a line where we said that this was raphia, right, and paneum, so this would have been midnight, but that's another line. So there's actually another line before this line, but I'm just going to jump to this line. So this is July 18. So the prediction before midnight lines up with midnight. The first day of the fifth month, what is this?
Okay, so this would is it December. Would it be December the twenty fifth, two thousand twenty? Why I said that I don't know. Well, no, that's not that's not bad, right? Would you wouldn't say that the December the twenty fifth, two thousand twenty, would be midnight cry? Well, I don't yeah. think so. I, I, I'm I'm not saying it's not connected because I think it is is connected. That's now, the uh, 777 days after July 18th, right? Um, yeah. So if we go here, January 6th, 2021. What about that date? I mean, I'm not certain about this part of it. I'm just saying if we're following the logic here, we could mark these as midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law. Because we have this as a Sunday law in our 777 kind. That would be the seas on Washington, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, but it was the it was the Ashley, the day that Ashley died. Yeah. Yeah. Whose name in Hebrew adds up to seven seven seven. Right. right. And we also know there's the supposed 187 minutes that Trump doesn't do anything. Remind me who Ashley is again. Ashley Elizabeth Babbitt. She's the girl that got shot. When, okay. yeah. During the so called siege. Yeah. I mean, an unarmed person who wouldn't do anybody any harm. She shouldn't have been shot, but, you know, that's a whole other issue. She becomes a symbol, sadly, right? So, so I'm yes. not exactly what to do with this. I think this is what we partly have to come to understand. Um, you know, and we, we might even say, I mean, maybe we're still don't know exactly when we understand this. But we should be able to see at least that. Um, we have more to understand about the lines, right? That's an understatement. Mm -hmm. So anyway, our time is up. So you're gonna keep it as 2020? No, I just put it as 2022 20, with, you know, I don't know what, if we even understand that yet. I mean, we do have, now we have in 2023, I guess you can say, we can look at it as 11.9. But we were starting to understand the lines that way, even in 2019. But we were conflicted because we had 9.11 or 11.9, November 9th, as um, midnight. But I think we were on another line there. So, so what we have to do is we have to parse out these lines. We have to define them more clearly than I have here. So, you know, again, I apologize for the lines simply presented, but I think there are some simplicities here that can help people understand the lines who've studied them before. But yeah, there's still lots we don't know. But we can see how they're consistent, right? With what we understand about the lines. It's it's starting to become clearer and clearer. Um, there, there's really no arguments with anybody. It's just that we've got to figure this, how we are lining them up and on what line we are aligning them on. Right. So when we have a way mark, so for instance, one thing that's not re really in here, but it is because it's in Samuel Snow's letters. In Samuel Snow's letters, we haven't really marked them as the time of the end, 
the formalization of a message, the empowerment of the message, right? But we should. I mean, we need to understand Samuel you, Snow's You're talking about line. Snow's letters, right? Letters, Snow's line. Because right? obviously yeah. um, there, there are some things about his letters that are interesting in how we could lay them out. Um, for In particular, we have um, on New Year's Eve, he's going to do a presentation, his personal testimony at the Boston Tabernacle. And the next day he decides that he's going to present his understanding about Christ coming back in the fall. And that's the time of the end, right? In a sense, you can say January 1st is the time of the end or even December 31st. 1843, because that's initially the end of Miller's first understanding. Once he gave the year 1843 on the charts, that was January 1st to December 31st, 1843. But he's then going to, after the charts are printed, he's going to start moving that over to March 21st, 1843 to March 21st, 1844, in December of 1842. But still, it's a time of the end. And so we could say that his, um, his letter, when it's first uh, written, or maybe when it's published, is formalization of that message. And maybe the empowerment is when it's published, or maybe when it's republished is the empowerment. And then you get the arrival of the second angel. Well, maybe that's on a, you know, April 3rd, maybe that's on April 19th, however we want to look at it. So we haven't addressed that in Samuel Snow's letters. Yeah, we're going to need to sit down and do that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you were talking about how impatient you were. <laughs> that 2030 date is looking long enough. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but, you know, it just doesn't seem like there's so much work. There. Uh, and, and we've been doing this for like two years and, We've only yeah. gotten this far. Um, it is. I, I want to encourage you not to not to worry about that. That's that's a uh, that's not that's a non-issue. It's going to come to us as long as we're doing this. Right. We just keep doing what God asks us to do. That's right. Yeah. But I think we are all, all are by nature impatient creatures. That's why we need the patience of the saints. So right. anyway, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this afternoon. We pray that you can bless those who watch this study. Um, help people to, uh, to think things through, to ask questions, that we can address uh, these things. Uh, be with us through the rest of this week. And the rest of this day, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.